Hi, my name is Kyle, and I'll be refuting um, the main proposition of Alberto Moreno. His main proposition is illegal immigration has a negative impact on American society through the backing of three secondary claims. Um, one, illegal immigration suppresses wages of the working poor. Two, puts an extra strain on certain services. And three, puts a strain on our already overcrowded school systems. So in response to his first secondary claim, illegal immigration suppresses wages of the working poor. The advocate, Alberto, uh, claims if illegal immigrants didn't take the jobs, the government would have to raise wages to do the jobs, which is an invalid argument because it is, uh, his reasoning is based on George Boras and Thomas Sowell, which have a bias on against um, illegal immigrants. So this overlooks the pros and cons. And according to the Bureau of Labor Logistics, high labor supply from undocumented immigrants may initially depress wages, but over time, firms increase investment to restore capital per worker, in turn restoring wages. And also, in 1980, the capital labor ratio extended alongside um, the entrance of illegal Im immigrations when it accelerated. So after decades following after 1980, the actual capital to labor ratio did not significantly drop. Instead, it's shown a steady increase at a steady rate. Also, uh, the National Milk Foundation stated that retail mi milk prices would increase 61% without immigrants. So this basically backs it up that not only does um, it is invalid that illegal immigration suppresses wages, but also without immigrants, uh, there would be a, ra a raise in uh, agricultural products such as uh, milk. Um, and also referring back to his claim that illegal immigrants didn't take the jobs, the governments would have to raise wages. This, this is also invalid because of the skill sets that illegal immigrants have uh, compared to American citizens. Uh, in comparison, uh, in a, uh, based off uh, a campaign from the Take Our Jobs, uh, funded or started by the United Farm Workers Union, basically this campaign res was restricted only for American citizens. Uh, with unemployment rate at about 9.5% and 14.6 million people out of work, only 4,000 American citizens responded to this, and this includes hate mail. So the president, Arturo Rodriguez, of the Union, <coughs> claimed that only a few dozen followed through with the process. In response to his secondary claim, illegal immigration puts extra strain on certain services. The advocate claims that illegal immigration puts an extra strain on certain services but throughout his speech, he only mentions health care. He fails to recognize the other certain services that he claims. Um, most illegal immigrants aren't allowed to participate in Medicaid, supplemental security income, and food stamps. Also, they do not receive any forms of welfare, public health care, and retire retirement benefits. The only services that illegal immigrants are eligible for are those that are uh, in emergency situations such as emergency medical care, ER visits, of course, schooling or education, and special nutrition for women and children. They are ineligible for health insurance, food stamps, Medicaid, Social Security, and welfare. Lastly, in response to his third secondary claim, illegal immigration puts strain on our already overcrowded schools. The advocate claims that one third of all schools is overcrowded, mentioning illegal immigrants that shouldn't be there. In question of eligibility, 36% of, of U.S. born children of immigrants are college graduates, which is 5% above national average. The advocate also claims that state financial aid provided for illegal immigrants results in less money in Texas for students. Um, state financial aid referring to the ones provided in Texas. Uh, in response, Senator Rodney Willis says that tex Texas grants was and is designed to reward high achieving students. So this is on a basis of equal opportunity and not where uh, citizens or people or, uh, originate from. So while there's an argument for less money being provided for Texas citizens, there are a substantial amount of aids that are provided exclusively for Texas citizens. Texas citizens, such as the Lyndon B. Johnson Foundation, Texas Public Educational Grant, and Texas Education, Ed, Education Opportunity Grant, and more. 
So in conclusion, illegal immigration has positive impact, has a positive impact on the American society. Thank you. All right, Kyle, the structural stuff is all okay at the beginning. Um, when On the first point, when you talk about suppressing wages, you suggest that this is uh, really, um, you know, at best hypothetical. And you suggest that the advocate's sources are biased for some reason. I'm not exactly sure what your basis for reaching that conclusion is because they have an opinion about this issue. I don't know that that proves bias. Uh, I think you want to be careful about making an argument like that unless you have something more substantive than that. Uh, the uh, second argument, though, uh, is a little confusing because you've got this information about um, you know, capital versus labor ratios uh, on that second point. And I'm not exactly sure how that applies to the uh, wage suppression issue. It might have something to do with the economic advantage of hiring immigrants or particularly immigrants who are undocumented, but it, it, how it affects uh, the wage point was not very clear and needs to be explained. Uh, the milk argument talks about the price of milk, not wages, so uh, <laughs> it is a, an interesting counterpoint, but it doesn't apply to the issue that's being presented. Uh, the argument about the skill set, uh, I was not quite clear. It sounds to me like what you're saying is that the UFW simply made the offer to make these jobs available to Americans and that Americans did not really apply for those jobs. I'm not sure that that's the case. I mean, like I said, I, I don't know. You need a direct quote on this. You need a clear explanation. It sounds like you're paraphrasing uh, an event that happened, and I don't know that it's being paraphrased accurately. Uh, the direct quote would probably solve some of those problems, and then it would be a little bit easier for me to make an inference about what's going on there. Uh, on the uh, services strain, you make an argument that says that they're not eligible for a variety of these kinds of services. Make sure you give us a citation on that. That shouldn't be hard to do. I assume that you're probably correct on that, uh, but uh, you do want to give us a source citation. And then you say the health care costs are the only things, places that the advocate talked about. And then you say, and here's you know the places that they could actually get those health care issues. But then you also add... Um, education issues are also applicable there and then there's an aid for um, children and uh, women uh, you know so all of a sudden it does sound like there are some services that there are uh, available to them so I'm not you know I'm not sure how much you've diminished that particular point and there's no numerical information there now if the advocate didn't provide any numerical information to evaluate that and you don't provide any numerical information on that then maybe it's a push and uh, it's hard to resolve but if their information did have some statistical comparative inf data on it and you don't I think that's a little bit problematic so you might want to be a little bit more assertive on that particular point on the third point uh, I do think you have an interesting argument that's a counter argument that suggests that the children of illegal immigrants, uh, a third of them finish college, uh, that, that's fine, but that doesn't really talk about the issue that the advocate's talking about, which is the cost of the colleges or the cost of, to the schools and the overcrowding issues that go along with that. Um, the, um, the, the next response that you have basically says, well, you know, uh, the uh, grants that are being given are being given on their achievements which I think that the advocate might be willing to concede, but their argument is that that means that um, people who would uh, be citizens are excluded from that opportunity if somebody's a higher achieving immigrant. Um, and if it's a tax-based thing, I could see why there's an objection to it. I think your better answer is the last part where you say, look, there is aid that is exclusively for citizens that those folks can get access to, and there isn't any competition on that. I think that works a little bit better. All right, thank you.